Uh, okay. Um, I am Ken Benedict. Today is what the thirtieth, I think. Yep. yep. Already. Thirtieth. Already the thirtieth. <laughs> Time flies, man. And uh, we are here with Ray and his lovely wife to discuss what they were growing up with in Orangevale years ago. Um, just as a disclaimer, this is only going to be used for the Orangefield History Project. We're not going to make yes. any money off of it. Right, We're right. Not okay, gonna... no problem. Understandable. Yep. And if your family wants the footage for some reason down the road, they're certainly welcome to do sure. to it. Or, okay. or you. you uh, right. Yeah. Either, either, something like that. So, um, when did you guys get here in Orangevale? February of 83. Okay, at this house here? Yeah, yes. this house. Uh, but this house was my grandparents, Ralph and uh, Dolores Martin. And they lived here from, where would Grandpa build the house? 47. 47. They came out, probably a little bit before that, they came out here. And from what I was told, bought the whole 20 acre parcel. And uh, sometime in the 50s, they started selling off chunks a little bit at a time. An uncle lived, or aunt and uncle lived around the corner on Main Avenue, uh, across from the house that has a little choo choo train in front. On Main? Yeah. Okay. If you if you if you drive past it fast, you won't see it because it's in the center of the yard and it's only about that tall. Oh, okay. But uh, so Grandma and Grandpa lived here, and the house next door was for the in-laws. So this house and the one next door are almost identical in size and the way they were built. Oh, where did they come from? Grandpa was from Nebraska and I'm assuming that Grandma also was. Uh, to my knowledge as a kid, I don't remember hearing much about Grandpa's relatives, but I do Grandma's. She had a bunch of brothers and sisters and they uh, settled down in the Napa or the Bay Area because I believe all the brothers worked, e were either, were more likely in the military and worked at the shipyard down there in Benicia area. And uh, so then they, Grandpa and Grandma moved up here. And, uh, you know, of course, being a kid, you go over to Grandma's house every now and then and uh, was Grandma and Grandpa, were they uh, uh, farmers or were they, what did they well, do? Well, Grandpa was a carpenter by trade. And I kind of feel that I inherited his talents a little bit at, about building things. But uh, Grandma, she was just a housewife. You know, typical of back then watching soap operas and that type of stuff. But Grandpa, he was, if he wasn't building something, as a kid, I remember he, because on the, what used to be called the back porch was uh, his potbelly stove and he'd sit there and have himself a Regal Select and smoke a rolled your own cigarette and... Uh, Probably Bull Durham or something like that? Yes. Uh, bugler. Yep. And, uh, uh, you know, he did yard work and gardening and that type of stuff. So but you, I don't remember any other aunt with maybe next door they did, but I don't remember on this property really any animals per se. So uh, you were one of five? No, I'm I'm just one of two. Oh, one of two. My 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 mother, who was their daughter, was their only child. Oh, okay. And she currently resides in a assisted living. Papa. Okay. What, buddy? What's he ask? My name? What, buddy? My name's uh, Ken. That's just Caleb. Okay. <laughs> you want to come sit next that's to Grandpa? That's a camera. You want to come sit next to Grandpa for a few minutes? There you go. Yeah. All right. So they they built this house and... And the house next, next door. door. Okay. Down the road. Yeah. And they owned 40... 
40 well acres. they originally bought 20 acres and after they sold sold almost all of it off there was there's three acres next door that of course it's been sold two or three times since the grandparents passed so there was three acres there and two acres here that they still owned but we've got the last two acres you might say of that 20 acre parcel wow and like i said property down around the corner on main avenue um it's got kind of a house is kind of off to the right on the left of the house is what you might call a garage with apartments above it that was an aunt and uncle and from what i was told Bob was a guard at the prison, and okay, and his wife Helen was the postmaster. Oh, okay. Well, those houses on Main Avenue, on the left-hand side. If you, make, if you if you go down to Main Why from here and make a left, it's about you got the house on the corner, then you got the house with a horseshoe driveway on the left, then that pasture right there. That property that goes back is where it that was. That was where it was. Okay. Yeah. One of those houses had a basement. That one, that was two more down. I don't know if it was another. Because I've been in that basement. Relative. That's what house it's in the process of being renovated, right? I don't know. They had some contractors in there. They were redoing the outside of the house. Oh, okay. But yeah, I know which one you mean. That one's built quite similar to the one next door. Okay. Yeah. I've been in that basement several times. So, the guy that was living there had a big gun collection. Oh wow. Swords and guns and just. Oh wow. He had more than he had enough for a museum in himself. Wow. wow. So. Yeah. Okay, so then you moved. We moved in here because Grandma. She passed already. Yes. She had passed, so we moved in here, and a few years after that, we did some adding on to the house because we had four kids, and the house was only built for one. Back then, there was one bedroom for you, one bedroom for your spouse. I don't know where the kids slept. Wow. Because there wasn't a third room. Wow. Did they um, uh, plumb it for AC? No. No. And, and, and the original heater was from the 40s. It was like you would see in a cabin on a movie of the 40s. It was about not quite two feet of a square. Caleb. Not quite two feet of a square and about that tall brown porcelain when uh, it was decided it needed to be replaced by PG&E they asked when it was replaced could they stop by and pick it up for their museum well the reason I ask is because Ray Ray Cook right yes did a lot of AC work in this area yeah no it, it was never unfortunately it was never thought of to put air conditioning in the house Okay. Yeah. Yes, I see Caleb. Thank you. Caleb, go play. Wow, thank you. And um, then what did you what did you do? How old were you when you moved in here? Twenty four and twenty five. Oh you okay. And Caleb. And then what were you guys doing? What were you what were you were you in the service? No, no. Um, I don't know if you want to say fortunately or unfortunately, but due to the time in the seventies when uh, they, uh, uh, what do you want to say, suspended the draft, I was in that three years. So, Caleb. No, I don't have any kids. Well, I have two. See, I have two girls. Um. So, uh, Caleb. So. Uh, uh, at the time we moved in here, I was still working for Blue Diamond downtown. Oh, I worked wow. for them for 18 years. Quit working there because they they uh, 
we hadn't had a raise in seven years and they were messing with benefits and so I uh, uh, watched and I got a job with the school district work worked for San Juan district for 10 years before I became medically retired what did you do for the district I worked in the warehouse so it was a combination of receiving mailroom delivery freight delivery in the end food service delivery uh, textbook warehouse did you do anything with a bus barn that was on no. Main Avenue down here no okay uh, they uh, um, at, at the time I worked for them bus barn had been at uh, over in Carmichael for, okay you go in the bedroom so they moved it over to Carmichael for a while? Yeah, it had been at Carmichael for quite a number of years before neighbors complained so much. And then they moved it all the way over Orange Grove in North Highlands. Wow. Yeah. So you, a bus driver, would probably have a half an hour trip once you dropped your last kids off to get to the bus barn. And then you were stuck coming home in Madison Avenue traffic. Man. Yeah. So, what was Orangevale like way back then? It was a lot less people, of course. Um, the road that's in front of us, we had one neighbor across the street, and uh, the road was a dirt road. Main Avenue? No, this road here. This one, Main okay. was as it is today, two lanes paved, um, where the new 7-Eleven is, was a Vans Market. Um, where CarQuest is at was a market. There was like five markets in Orangevale where the uh, uh, businesses by Aunt Ashley's that was a uh, parade market. Then you had P and D market on Main. Yeah, uh, you had P and D that was ran by. One of the families that lived here on uh, uh, Vallejo Drive. Uh, uh, what? Wyatt. Wyatt. I think so. And then down in the parking lot where Walmart is used to be uh, uh, Capri Market. So there was all kinds of markets and all kinds of bars um, on Greenback in the parking lot where... Um, Breakmaster is was a Pink Pussycat Theater. I remember that. <laughs> one, one story was told one time one of the grandma's relatives was up and they needed to go and get grandpa. Grandpa and one of the cousins were in the, in the Pink Pussycat. But, uh, yeah, there was all kinds of markets. Um, you know, what I remember from the one where uh, CarQuest is was there was, uh, of course, back in the back where the meat part was, there was sawdust on the floor, just like you would have seen. And I, was, I don't know how old I was then. Little uh, Grandpa, he had an old 60 Dodge pickup. It may have had a few dings in it, but it wasn't because of him. He drove too slow to get in that accident. But to get out of the house, he'd say, You want to go get a soda pop? Okay. So we'll hop in the truck and tool down the street. And he'd get two Regal Selects so he could make many trips. Mm -hmm. And uh, about when was that? Back in the 50s? Probably, well, probably was. Because I was. I was born in '57, so yeah, probably sometime in the '60s. I'd say I would. I could see out of the truck, so I must have been, I don't know, maybe eight or ten. And uh, so, what did you guys do for entertainment? I don't remember, because uh, there weren't many families around that uh, you know the kids would play. Um, well, there used there to be tree, a, there was a that uh, fruitless pear tree that's still in the back pasture 
that was there then had a tree house in it and you know you'd play uh, the neighbor that used to live next door uh, Elsie Merrill her husband was Rico from the original Rico's Pizza yeah but she had two granddaughters and they'd come down from Chico sometimes in the summer and you know you'd have somebody to pell around with but you kind of have to invent what you were doing there was a drive-in on Greenback where the uh, veterinarian place is right now the veterinarian hospital I think it was Skip's drive-in or something like that do you remember that I don't remember it but right there on the corner when we moved out here it was kind of in a hole and it was a George's produce at the time okay George had it after the drive-in guy right and you had uh, Dairy Queen was a foster freeze where Goodyear tire is was Ferdinand's a drive-in and in its later days somebody had the bright idea to put a bird Avery inside the front door of the restaurant and you know what kind of little critters that attracted it wasn't long before that closed um, I don't remember if there was another hamburger stand close or not it was Hangaber which is where Little Caesars Pizza is right now yeah. okay yeah yeah because yeah. George was also in that when that became hanging burger became vacant George had a flower shop there too I remember the flower shop man so and you know of course the feed store that was Sicardi's for a years num and from what I was told um, it was originally across the street by the Capri on that property somewhere right because my dad's parents would uh, that that's where they get their feed from yeah they, and then he moved across the street to Green, yeah greenback yeah at some point yeah mm-hmm and always very nice people to deal with now you went to Bella Vista, Bella Vista and when did you guys get married January 7th of 1977 don't forget that date oh no I can't because the day before is her birthday oh well <laughs> there, mm -hmm. there, there you go <laughs> well, and did you guys get married here in Orangevale and Fair Oaks, Fair Oaks. Yeah. yes okay <laughs> Caleb and Jacob so you did get married here in Orangevale Fair Oaks or Fair Oaks okay. close enough yeah. alrighty how did you meet her? Well, um, I was the kind of kid that was shy. Uh, I didn't really have friends in school. You know, one of the kids that gets picked last for teams. Well, mm -hmm. Stuff. we we went on our senior picnic. Caleb, shh. I'll show you later. That's magic stuff. I'll show you later afterwards. Um, our senior class picnic was to be at a a little lake. Jake, Caleb, Dada. Jacob. I'll show it to you a little later on. Okay. Go watch cartoons now. Um, there was supposed to be a snack bar at this lake where our senior picnic was to be up in Cameron Park. There's a lake that's nestled between Cambridge and Cameron Park Drive, and uh, um. So, uh, they said there was going to be a snack bar, and I thought, okay, I don't know anybody, I don't know why I'm going, but I will. Got some change in my pocket, get on the bus like the rest, long Levi's cowboy boots, not the fitting outfit to go swimming in. We get up there, get off of the bus, no, Drink out. walk around, watching my fellow... Uh, classmates swimming and thinking okay what am I gonna do now and at that point I found myself a tree and sat down thinking why did I come up here 
<laughs> and then he saw. And then I see these two girls walking towards me. And they kind of lean forward a little bit. They both have bikinis on. And ask, would I like to eat lunch with them? <laughs> yes. <laughs> there is a God, right? Stop. Well, of course, she was one of those two girls. <laughs> so why did you ask him? I felt sorry for him. He looked like he lost his Are you going to the best friend other, and his other puppy. Room? <laughs> Go. No, in the other room, Jacob. So it was a sympathy lunch. Yeah. Kind of. That's the best peanut butter sandwich I ever ate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Then, then you guys moved here, or did you have another house? Oh, no, we uh, we lived with my folks for a year. Papa. And then we moved to an apartment down on Marconi because I worked at the almond growers, and that was relatively close to the freeway to work. Uh, I think it was about a year, maybe two years, I spent working swing shift, and then I got on day shift, worked for the almond growers for 18 years. And uh, for one or two years oh. we moved to we, the opportunity oh, yeah. came up no you leave that alone and leave it alone we got where'd you off. guys go on your honeymoon disneyland <laughs> so did we <laughs> we had never been so oh. it was january of course a lot of stuff was uh, now I can say we made a mistake as having her sister make the accommodations because the room we were in, it opened up to the pool. Well, January and a pool. And, it's raining. Um, we get to the room. I found the piped in music control but not the heater control. One nice cold room. Uh, the trip down there was interesting. There was a, it was probably a small plane of uh, 49er fans that found out that they had newlyweds aboard. They didn't really do anything. You know, most of them were soused to begin with. But it was interesting. So when did you get your interest in classic cars? Short, shortly after or a few hour, years after? Probably around, let's see. We had, I think it was before we got married, we got the Maverick. Or yeah, it was before. We, we, we had bought a uh, 75 Maverick Grabber as our only car. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, then in 90... Caleb, I don't know if it was 92 or 93, we started going up, there was a Jaspers up in Rockland that did classic car stuff, and, uh, no, we had got the Mustang already, because I got my back hurt in the accident in 86, so it was prior to, yeah, it was either before we got married or shortly after that we bought the Maverick. I think it was before. But then in 86, somebody rear-ended me, which put it into that. And then uh, 92, we bought the Mustang. And Is that the 65? Uh, four and a half. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't and see the side. I can't tell. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's an interesting hobby. We've, we've met a lot of fun people. We've ran into classmates. And... Uh, they can't believe that it's the same person that they went to school with because that guy they went to school with was quiet and shy and <laughs> yeah not anymore <laughs> excuse me <laughs> so did you guys do anything special on the weekends normally during the summer we put on car shows that benefit like Shriners Hospital SPCA, Roseville K9, Folsom K9. Were you the organizers? Yes. Ooh. I was the one that got Ray into the hobby. 
because <laughs> as a little girl, I would blackmail my sister and my cousin to go cruising with them downtown Sacramento in the early 60s, 64. Yeah, I did that too. And if they didn't take me, I'd tell daddy. And it worked, so I went, I've been cruising since the early 60s. Did you take any of your car clubs down the, the Powwow Day Parade in yes. Orangevale? Yes. Tell me about that. Well, they asked for some cars and we uh, yeah. participated on and off for quite a number of years. And we also would take dignitaries, carry dignitaries and stuff. We've also um, ground floor of Folsom's Veterans Day Parade. We've been with them since the very beginning. They wanted us to carry some veterans and we told them we'd be more than honored. And Was that the parade they just had recently? No, that, no. that one just sprung up within the last several years. Oh. Veterans Day Parade is usually on Veterans Day. Okay. And the Folsom, Folsom Veterans Day Parade has grown from when we started with the, that the vets ask us, it started at the community center and ended at the veterans hall there on, I think it's Forest Street. Uh, there was like a half a dozen of us and veterans on a misty day. And uh, shortly after that, the city stepped in. It's grown to be probably the largest veterans day parade in Sacramento. Nice. Hour and a half at least from start to finish. Wow. So, a number of years ago, I stopped using the truck with the clutch on the parade. <laughs> I'll drive the Mustang. I don't need to, to replace the clutch again. Yeah, a lot of start and stops. Yeah, very hard on cars. Mm hmm So. So, did you have a favorite car? Probably the Mustangs. Mm hmm and Did you have only one Mustang? Yes. Okay. And I also like the 56 Chevy because that's what I got to go cruising in mm. when I was a little girl with my sister and my cousin. You were probably down on K Street. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Waving at everybody and knowing that, haha, I got to go cruising again. Were you down there on closing night on K Street? Mm -mm. No. Oh, big, big event. Big of it. That's a, that's a whole now, we were interview. On, we, because of a radio station, we were down there on the reopening. Oh. I think uh, between our, I don't know if it was just our club, but there was, I think, at least 20 classics. They had us all line up in one of the alleys, and then it was time to go up and down. Do you remember on Greenback Lane, uh, Wilkie's Auto Wrecking Auto Parts? Yeah, over there on the left where the glass shop is. Yes. Do you ever go in the back and scrounge no, I, around no, for parts? No. No. <laughs> I did. And he had gas pumps in front, too. Yes. Not from there, but because we, like most people who are into classic car stuff, are also collectors of things. Um, out in the trucks carport, we've, I don't know if you noticed, but we've also got a 47 Dodge truck for a third owner of. Oh, no, didn't know Sitting that. right next to it is a 19, I think it's 28 gas pump. One of the 10 gallon visible. Where you fill it up to the top and then count down? Yes. Mm -hmm. This one's got a unique feature that is very rare. Uh, did a lot of you know sometimes you have something and you just leave it set and then you get a motivation to do some checking on things and I found some interesting things on that that particular pump I forget the name I've got it in the other room but uh, it's a little bit of a rare pump what were some of the roads like around here Hazel Avenue Greenback Madison and, you know I it's hard for me to remember way back, but I'm pretty sure Hazel was just a two-lane road. Especially looking at some of the houses that are between Greenback and Central. Mm -hmm. They had to have more frontage. Uh, I remember on 
Hazel, right across from the community center, there's those couple of baseball diamonds in a little building. That was the community center. And you're probably too young to remember the clubhouse at the corner of Hazel and Greenback. That I don't remember, but I do remember as a kid the old powwow days parade back in the day. The property where Denny's is today was nothing but, I think the only thing that was in that shopping center right about where the parking lot for America's Tire was um, I forget the guy's name but he was an attorney and there was this square kind of a cinder block building and he had his attorney's office and that's where most people would go to get their taxes done and the rest of it was nothing but a dirt property and that's where the old powwow days would be and I remember as a kid whether it was that big or not, it it looked like it was big enough to take up that whole block, the midway, and all the stuff that went with it. Yeah, they uh, the buildings ended where the post office is. Yeah. Actually, a little bit f earlier than that. And there was nothing but thistles yep. out here. Wow. Yeah. I remember that. Um, Do you remember much about the Capri Market? Well, yeah, because uh, my barber was in that same shop, Barry, uh, in that, because there was, there was the barber shop, there was a shoe repairman, there was a cleaners, and then I think in there someplace was a Rexall drug. I think it was down on the far end, and you had Capri, Mar Capri Market, and you had Capri Cafe best biscuits and gravy and coffee you could get that's that's been mentioned several times <laughs> oh I, yeah. I remember rocky he was a hell of a nice guy uh capri market you know they had stuff chris can relate a time when we were still living with my folks that dad dad and i went shopping there we wanted to get some steaks to barbecue the meat was green all of it. So we turned around and went out and had dinner. Kim, Kim's Chinese food down on Manzanita and Madison. Speaking of Chinese food, do you remember the Oriental restaurant at the corner of Main and Orangevale Avenue? I don't remember the building there as a kid, but uh, another friend of ours, mother said that there was a Chinese restaurant right there on the corner. And I'm thinking because I don't know prior to how Greenback was configured where it actually stopped, but but I do know the pathway of what was it called, Highway 40? It came over across the Orangevale Avenue Bridge and straight across. I don't know how it tied into Old Auburn Road because Old Auburn Road is also Highway 40. So somehow it connected in there and, you know, it didn't surprise me that there was a market there and whatever else because, uh, you know, people. They've, they've got a committee working on the Highway 40 through Orangevale project. Oh, wow. I remember the uh, Blue Frog recycling that used to be on Main. Yeah. Eh. There was a lot of funny things. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And before that, it was, uh, or, or in addition, about the same time was the Goodyear Tire Store. That was oh, right yeah. Right uh, Orange, Orangevale OK Tires. Yeah. It was right there. Well, before it was the OK Tires, it was the Goodyear Store. Oh, okay. Because my dad used to go in there all the time and get tires from the Goodyear guy. Right. Mm hmm. I was just trying to chase down that Chinese restaurant on the corner because it was only there for a, a while. Huh. And it was always takeout. You couldn't you couldn't eat there. Oh wow! It, it was a small That's place. I mean, maybe as big as this this I'm room here. Oh wow! Maybe what late forties. It's a microphone. To maybe early fifties. <laughs> Quiet. 
got to be at least 62. Uh -huh. That's when I got here in Orangevale. Yeah. No. And I used to uh, go with my grandfather. We used to drive over oh, there and pick up a meal talking. and take it back and eat it. Oh, wow. So it was in the good boy early to mid-60s. Yeah. You got to be in go another room, you good boy. But then they tore it down and no one remembers it but me. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting, the small things. Yeah. How they might go together, you know. Like, uh, Mel's was a gas station before it was Mel's. In, in fact, uh, I don't remember where we were at, but that was Groom's Texaco Service. I ran across their postcard, their wow. wallet f thing from 1960. Uh huh. Groom's Texaco Service. When the phone number was YU. Yep, it was Yukon 8. <laughs> Do you remember party lines? Yes. Oh, her dad used to cuss them because the neighbor would get on. He, he'd want to call somebody. They're still on the phone. No, they you don't went climb on over to that. The early 70s. Mm -hmm. Party lines. Mm -hmm. Right here. Pop. Sit right there. Yeah, Someone there. came up with a picture and it was no. the Wu family um, a few weeks ago I and they had a picture of what a, at the intersection of um, Greenback and Hazel uh -huh. where the Capri market used to be. Right. Yes. And it was before that it was a family grocery. Okay. A local grocery okay. store. Okay. It showed Hazel Avenue as being a dirt road. Wow. wow. Dirt. Wow. wow. Yeah, and very narrow. It showed Greenback as being just a two-lane paved road. And that was it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. It is. It is to see what and how things were. Lumberjack used to be where... Yeah, it's a Winco. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people remember that one. There was a uh, railroad uh, track that went through Orangevale also for six years. Yes. And went all the way up to Lincoln. And then in the 30s, they had the phrase that killed the orange trees. So they planted olive trees out here in Orangeville. So everybody that had property had an orange, had olives. And mm -hmm. they would take them down here in Orangeville to process them. You would? No. No, they, people that His had orange or... or Olives. Olive orchards. Yeah, yeah, his grandparents did. And some of my, my parents and relatives did, but it was the olive processing plant over on Auburn Boulevard. Yes. About yeah. Across the street from the 12 mile house. Right. Mm hmm. Yeah, there was that one, and then there was a big one where Spaghetti Factory is. Yes. <laughs> I'm surprised you remember that. <laughs> That's well, good. I always wondered what. When you drive through the parking lot, all those ba bump ba bump ba bumps, well, those I assume were possibly like drains. Mm -hmm. for the, cause they're, I, I remember when I was still a kid, there were still the, the big, huge wooden, uh, I don't know if you'd want to call them barrels, but they were huge. They probably held thousands of gallons of water or, or whatever was needed. They, after the uh, olive place was was done the new owners came in and it took them two and a half almost three years to sandblast the entire internals wow. to get them back down to the wood so you could see the wood oh it was all black oh yeah so if you go into spaghetti factory and and look up you'll see that that's the that's the wood that's been sandblasted right mm-hmm but interesting yes it's interesting to see the way things were what else do you can you remember about Orangevale? Wow. Mm. Knowing more people. We knew our neighbors and now because it's expanded we hardly know anybody. You know, it's like it's like one person said that we were talking to, you know, you used to be able to go to Dairy Queen and there were a couple people that you would know. Now sometimes you go to Dairy Queen, and you don't know anybody that's there. Then in nineteen eighty six, Ottoman grammar school opened up and so our son 
started there when he was in fourth grade. Cassettes when Ottoman opened when he was in fourth and then our children went there. Now our grandkids are going to Ottoman and I was shard duty for 27 years there and I was crossing guard for Maine and Ottoman for 31 years. Wow. I was there doing crossing guard and yard duty before those houses were even built. I remember seeing the school being built. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nothing else around it. Nothing. Yeah. Well, the pro from what we understand, the whole property was owned by a family in Pleasanton. Oh. And then eventually somebody in the family, whether the parents passed on or whatever, and they decided to go ahead and sell the property. It was kind of interesting as to why the school district bought that chunk rather than something else, but the from what she had told me when the f school first started the original house was still off to the south side of the school that the school itself hmm. and there were some interesting and odd things that would go on at the house no doubt and of course being a crossing guard you know that the ottoman had two different names Yes. Okay. It's like Beach. Beach Avenue had two different names for a while. Hmm. Trajan Drive, I think, had two different names for a while. Mm -hmm. Can't imagine how they named that one. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, just the way things were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, big change. Well, I noticed being crossing guard, more kids would walk to school or ride their bikes or take the school bus. Now there's no school buses dropping kids off. And when we were kids, we didn't want to be seen with our parents. And now even the high school kids are being chauffeured to school by their parents instead of riding a bike or walking. Mm-hmm. Yep. So how many of these neighbors do you know around you? Oh my goodness. Well, we know from, well, the one in course down the end of the street and two that live across the street, the one on the corner. I would say we probably know probably about 10 neighbors mm -hmm. out of all the neighbors here. And it used to be everybody would talk to each other and now they don't. If you don't text on the telephone, you don't communicate with anybody. People are forgetting to really socialize like they used to. And it's sad. You know, there's, I, wanna, I wouldn't call it resurgence, but there's more of that going on at the farmer's markets, which happens to be every Thursday like tonight. Yes. Yep. They get out there in the and the picnic blankets and they just talk to other people yeah and I, we went over there once and it, it is interesting you know i can understand things with prices but it's not like it used to be farmer's market was a place that you could go and get a reasonably priced produce now you go to the farmer's market and you see things overpriced mm-hmm it's cheaper to go to the grocery store now than it is Hello? to go to a farmer's market. Hello? Yeah. Because yeah. Back yeah. when I was a little girl, Mom would go to the farmer's market to get her Hello? fruit, to make jam or tomatoes, to make tomato no sauce idea. and stuff. One of those nice phone calls that nobody can you know? Did, do you do canning yourself? Yes. We, we used the seal meal. Mm -hmm. And I know, you know, make, you know, I, I haven't made jam in a long time, but I know how to do all that. Jams and jellies and... Yes. Do you do whatever fruits in season? Normally. Mm -hmm. And we have three peach trees and they don't always come at the same time. They're spread out, so... So right now is plum season. Plum we don't have, peach. well, there used to be, when we first moved in, there's still a, a persimmon tree. I don't think we got any off it last year. No. We've got... Persimmon or pomegranate? Pers well, we had a pomegranate too, except I cut it down. Um, we got 
two pear trees in the pasture that big tree we thought it was dead and then sometime in the 80s we had pretty strong rains it was enough that it generated a shoot right up through the center of a tree that tree was there when we moved in and it was probably there before just like in the side pasture we've got an apricot tree where it is it's 70 years old we just lost a major I'm talking major branch off of it it this year it was loaded like I've never seen and you know watering is normal and went out there one day I was working in the side yard I went back Here's a whole section of the tree down. How recent was that? About three weeks ago. You are one of about 22 different people that have had tree branches fall off for no reason. Wow. Yeah. Now I know it was same here. I know it was wow. loaded, and I put a sprinkler on so that. But still, it just. And the funny thing, after I cut it down, you know the stump. Um, there's no sap coming up. You know, like a lot of trees, you'll have sap where it'll weep. Mm -hmm. What, buddy? But uh, as far as fruit trees, there used to be a um, a yellow plum. There was that. That was another one that took a dump while we were gone one day years ago. There was also a prune plum. That's the one that's. A lot bigger that has a flat pit. Mm. Um, there was a Concord grape. Papa. That thing was only it, it produced. It I'm produced, but it was very good for attracting bees. And being allergic to bees, I didn't think that'd be a good thing to leave around. No. Um, you ever have cherry trees? We've we got two cherries that we planted this year. We saw cherries on the one blossoms on both cherries on the one. And then nothing. We didn't get anything off of did it. Did you ever see bees on the blossoms? I don't remember if I did or not. Okay. And that's the thing we were just discussing with somebody else because the last several years I've had to put several of those bee traps up. I haven't seen any wasp, hornets, that kind of bee that you would want to get rid of. I haven't even had to put the, the traps up. Yeah, they're they're saying that the that there's a not enough bees to pollinate everything, everything to make things happen. Yeah, I believe it. Like cherries and the plums and yeah. some other stuff. Now the uh, garden is, to a sense, is doing better this year. Bell peppers and that stuff. Um, I don't know whether it's just the the produce, but I also redid a couple things. Uh, mm hmm watering wise and fertilizer wise it made things better but the uh, tomatoes we have yet to pick a ripe tomato it, they're not in the direct sunlight which would be part of it but still in the past we've had uh, a decent crop yeah um, and that, that's probably changed a lot from, since you were first here yeah strawberry well when we were first here we didn't have strawberry Caleb when we were first here, we didn't have animals. Japanese kids. Oh. Uh, we, I don't remember how long it was after we moved in. It was been a while. The, yeah. I think we first got into chickens because our son found one. He was little, not even this big, and he found one running around the backyard. And that's what started everything. Currently, we've got about 50 chickens. We are certified by the Department of Agriculture as an egg handler and sell fresh what eggs. Um, Come here. Hey, Come here. We've also got goats, mm -hmm. ducks, uh, pot belly pig, pig, a dumb turkey that it, as a chick he came up with his mother and other siblings mm -hmm. and uh, before you know it they had walked off and left him. Wow. One of the peacocks raised him and now he's he, he doesn't know he's not a peacock so when it they're in season he tries going at it with the male peacocks you know who's the 
Yeah. King. King. Did you ever have horses? No. No. I was always afraid of horses because of their size. Uh, from time to time, there was a lady that we know that we let her have her horses in our back pasture. Oh, nice. Um, can you think? Can you think of anything else that, that around Orange Vale? Oh or? my gosh! Just you know, ottoman opening. Yeah, Caleb, stop it. Schools that open in Orange Vale. And that was back in 85? 86. 86. 86. Um. And then in 97, we had the flood. We couldn't go to school. We had creeks all over Orange Vale. You don't know about them until we get a lot of rain. I think the first principal was Pam Costa. No. Oh. She was the third principal. Okay. There was, I don't know which number Karen Hunter was. Karen Hunter was our first principal. <laughs> she came. Karen Hunter was? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. Oh. Caleb. Okay. Caleb. Come here. Come here. Go under the bridge. Thank you. Now, I started working in Ottoman and... 88, 89, and Karen Hunter hired me. And then um, she moved on. And, um, oh my gosh. I'm trying to think of the second principal, but Pam was the third principal we had there. So I think through the years, I think we had about, so far, about 9, 10 principals. They usually stay maybe five years and then they move on. When Pam was there, I did a big show with her, did a video show, and we decorated the ceiling and put lower lights in, had a cloud-looking thing, uh -huh. had real interesting music going on. Uh, Pam for was a, a great for a play. principal. Oh, we had yeah. a lot of fun. Yes. We had a lot of fun well, together. No. Yeah. She and I did. Yeah. I just saw her a few weeks ago. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. She was uh, with some of the graduations. Oh my gosh. <laughs> she was. We had a lot of fun. Me, me. Yep. She's still around. Yeah. <laughs> still alive and kicking. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I think I've got everything that I need from you. Okay. Um, the One of the other gals might come by with a piece of paper for you to sign. Oh, sure. No that problem. just does the same thing to what we did verbally right. at, at the beginning. Okay. Okay. And then if you, can, if you think of anything else. Yeah, I can't think of, us a you know, things and places. Well, when Orangeville Bridge turned 100, our car club celebrated by taking. We, we had some cars. That. that. Nice. We did. You go under, he goes over. Um, what we did when the bridge opened that year, we had a car for each year. Wow, really? Each, dec each, each decade. No, each year. Wow. We have a friend, he had, what, 1915? Yes. And then we went down till, you know, so we had a car for each year. That really starting what 1916 1915 I think I know it was wow. in the teens and so when they celebrated their hundredth birthday our show got with us to see if we could possibly see how many cars we could get for for the years does anybody have a video of that <laughs> I don't know if they do or not but we did, we did the decades, of course, really? so some decades. Wow. We did, did too, because cars weren't made. Nope.